Cecilia Moniano. I am um, I work at Epside in Romania in Division Poca. I am also a GDG member. Um, I guess everybody knows what GDG stands for. Google Developers Group. Okay. So main organizer of this event. And today we will talk about 10 things you did not know about Android M. So this is more like a, a user perspective on Android M. So everybody knows that Android M has less than two months since it was released. And everybody knows that M stands for Marshmallow, right? So it's unknown information. So as I said, today you're going to hear about the top features of Android M. Some of them you might already know and be are familiar with, which is why I brought this interactive part of the session. So when you see this mark, please feel free to jump in and answer the question and you get skipped in the So I will try not to harm anybody during this 10 minute presentation. Okay, so let's start with this. Uh, have you noticed that the Android M doesn't have a dialogue shortcut anymore? Does anybody know what replaced the dialogue sh shortcut with? Google search? Google voice? Google search voice. Have you noticed? So for example, you, you, you will get it. <laughs> wow, cool. So that was for presentation purposes. So here you can see. So if I lock this, okay. You can see it down here. This is the Google Voice search. Okay, this is the new, new thing in, in Android M. And you can you can launch apps directly from the lock screen using the Google Voice search. And also, uh, it has a completely new look. And uh, you will see this. So for example, um, okay. who am I? Here is some information about who am I. No system is safe. Actually, I think I was <laughs> supposed to say, Google, okay Google, who are you? Searching for oneself can take a lifetime, but a good place to start is classic rock. Okay, this is a, these are some cool facts about how to use uh, the Google search. For example, so who are you? Or making a sandwich? Or how much wood would wood chuck chuck if there would be? You want to, if you want, I can play this for you so you can see, hear it. So fun. So, um, okay, Google. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? A woodchuck could chuck as much wood as a woodchuck would chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood. <laughs> uh, at, the, at the end of this presentation, I gave you the link with all the fun stuff. You can do it with Google Voice Search. Okay, so let's try the next one. Um, who knows uh, how to enable a system UI tuner? Or first, do you know what a system UI tuner is? No idea. Okay, <laughs> so this is the very last setting. This is the very last settings in settings. If I show you now, then you will know how to enable it. So no one knows how to enable it. Yes? Long press on the settings icon. In the oh, thank you. Center. Now I can long press the settings icon. So if we long press the quick, <coughs> you see? And now we have system tuner has been enabled. I will try this. Sorry. Please come a little bit closer. Okay, so the system UI tuner is down here. And basically now you can uh, toggle, you can rearrange the toggles in the UI. So these are the toggles, the Wi-Fi and stuff like this. And you can rearrange them, remove them, add them. This is new in Android Marshmallow. 
And a cool feature that was not before, if you can see the battery percentage now, even when we are up, you see? So usually you can see the percentage if you, you have to open the quick settings view, but if you don't open it, then you will just see it on the battery. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. Can you still see me? So now we can we can see the battery percentage indicator on the battery icon. Okay, who knows what happened with Google Settings app? You might have noticed that it's not available in the drawer app anymore. It disappeared. I just said that. <laughs> you said fine. It has been removed. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I think all of them will go to my boyfriend there. <laughs> okay, so it is now in the settings menu. And if we go... So if we go to the settings menu, you'll see that Google now has its own place. And now from here we can do a lot of stuff, like we can activate we can activate always listening mode, which means that if we go on voice and we go on OK Google detection, if it's always on, no matter where you are, you can say um, OK Google. We <laughs> didn't catch that. OK, so now we can do it from any app. You have an app open. You don't have to go to the home screen anymore and OK Google. Um, what time is it? Okay. Uh, also, the Google settings includes this setup nearby device. Okay, so this is the place where you can uh, add a new device via Wi Fi. So, if you want to configure an Android TV using your Google settings account, this is the option you, you will use. Let's try this one. I guess everybody knows what those is, right? No? No. No? Uh, not, none of you watched the Google Layout presentation? Does any of you have Android Marshmallow on the phone? Some of you. Have you noticed that now during nighttime, the battery percentage um, is not, so the battery doesn't want go from 100% to 80%, but rather only 5% off. So before the dose, this is an intelligent battery management system, okay? So before this feature was created, you would lose 20, 15 to 20% in the night of battery, and now it's down from three, around 3 or 5%. So, and this, so basically the dose feature uh, sees when the mobile or tablet is not used, for a period, longer period of time, and it goes in hibernate mode and saves battery. And there is a similar uh, feature for apps. So basically, if you have an app that stays and stays and stays and you don't use it anymore, it will go in. Step five. Crap, <laughs> you're too far. <laughs> you, you can come close. I can try this. I said I throw like a girl. Okay, so this is at standby. This is when apps uh, go in sleep mode, which means they are more of like, like if you go in settings and you disable it. So this is what app standby does, which means this app cannot use and doesn't use so the system resources or it doesn't run background services. It has no connection to the network, which basically means that you don't want to receive notifications from disabled apps. So if you have an app like WhatsApp and you haven't used it for two days and then you sh someone sent you a message but you don't receive the notification, this is why, because it was put in standby mode. Can it be customized? Yes, you can, you can customize. No, not the time, but you can customize which apps never go in standby mode. Okay. So you can do this. 
I'm doing this one. Who knows when no one tapped it? Okay, uh, so now on that is again a really big cool feature from, uh, from we, that uh, came with Android Marshmallow, which basically means that everywhere you are in an app, you can just, let's try this. So if I'm, for example, in YouTube, and I long press the home button, So basically, I can check Dash Berlin on Google, Google Plus, or see images of things. This will be revolutionary. Um, everybody will start using this once it will be known. Now you know it, so maybe you will use it. It will get even more popular. Uh, I will show you this. So basically, what now on tap does, it takes on screen keywords, okay, and it starts googling for them, and you get either app, uh, you get either app, uh, ideas, or you start googling for, for that. So these are people or places or things mentioned in, you can get it from web pages, Google apps, or third party apps. So just you tap on now, and you will get a list of specifications, what you can do. Okay, so you know this. I guess yes. <laughs> yes, it's the correct answer, but do you know how? <laughs> you don't know how. So um, Google removed micro SDs, right? Because they said that they have security issues. And now they reintroduced, so now they support micro SDs. I will give this for, for you. <laughs> Um, so now it, uh, it supports micro, micro SDs. The curious thing about this is that once you format a micro SD, you cannot use it anywhere else without erasing its data. <coughs> so it will basically be part of the Android device. Okay, so once formatted in an Android device, it, it will be internal storage. If you take it, if you pop it out and put it in your laptop, you won't see the data anymore. Uh, what can I do for uh, my laptop? Can you can uh, see it? Uh, I can use it anywhere I want. Yes, it will be as a part of internal storage. So it will just basically uh, give you more space. Okay, but if I want uh, to... If you want to see what's on it. Uh, yeah, if I want to see what's on it uh, on another device. You cannot, if you put it in another device, it won't show anything. So it, it, it will only be recognized by the Android device where you formatted it and used it. And uh, if you want to see what's inside, you can use this Explorer, which is basically yeah, the, the storage. So you know, until now we always had to download some type of Explorer, but now it's introduced in Android then. So if you go to if you go to settings and then you go to storage and USB you will see Explore. And now in Explore you can you can see what your Android has. Okay? But if you if you move it uh, from your laptop no, from your tablet to your phone and you have the same uh, Google account, is it possible to be synchronized? Does it have a cache or as far as I know it's device uh, dependent. Device but it's but not account, account specific. But we can check this when we actually have a device that supports micro SDs. Because okay. I have a Nexus 9, which unfortunately doesn't. Nexus 5. Any one of you has a 5X? Nexus 5X? No? <laughs> okay. But you can always mail me and tell me what happened if you put it in the phone. Good. Okay. So, everybody knows about permissions, right? That this was one of the biggest things that Marshmallow did, okay, updated the permission. So, uh, do you know where the permission types are in Android? How to, how to get there? Can we ask Google now? <laughs> <laughs> you can. Does it have an answer? <laughs> so, uh, do you know the, the difference that was made in our permissions? 
So now when you download an app <coughs> that has been updated with Android Marshmallow, you will only be getting the uh, normal security options like internet, so basic basic, uh, basic options, basic, basic permissions like internet or alarm clock. But if you want to use camera or other type of permissions, you will be prompted when your app will be needing to use the camera. You, you don't know this? Yes, <laughs> you know this? <laughs> okay, I can show you but the permission type. So basically, if you go to settings and you go to your app, you can enable or disable permissions for your app. And they, you can also go to settings and see the all permissions that are available, like camera, and see which applications are using camera. And this is a little bit more hidden than the, the previous type, so I will just show you how it works. So if we go to settings and we go to apps, if you just pick an app, you know, like calendar, you can see that it uses three types of permissions and they are all on, yes? You can disable or enable them. Now, the thing is that if you enable a permission and the developer didn't think about what will happen if that permission is uh, disabled, your app will crash. And as far as all what I have researched about, it's the developer's fault. <laughs> that he didn't think that he will do this. So if we want to see all permissions, so if you go to apps, and you go to settings, you can see app permissions. And these are all permissions that are allowed in Android. For example, you can see who is using which apps are using contact permissions. And you can disable them from here. For example, Amazon Kindle doesn't have permission to use my contacts. And I can enable or disable them from here. Is the app then still properly running? Uh, Kindle? So it's not a, um, like for example, if you have an app that requires camera permissions, so everything you do with that app is camera-based app. If you disable the camera-based, uh, you cannot do anything with it. But Amazon Kindle doesn't need context. Many of these applications don't need context, they just require for it. And how, how do they react if they are trying to access something that they don't, they are not a so this yeah. also depends on how the developer uh, develops the app. Um, basically, what Google uh, says is next time that you create an app, if someone wants to disable an app permission from the settings, you will have to prompt them with a, with a toast or something saying, don't do this, you will break it or something. Okay. Uh, can I choose this uh, before? Or during the installation process of the app? Because during the installation process of the app, you are prompted only with the mm, basic permissions that are necessary, like internet or... Okay. And all other permissions you will be prompted when you start using the app and the moment that it will need to use something that needs a permission. If you deny, then you cannot, you cannot access it, so it won't open the camera if people take can it. I, can I choose, I don't know, Defaults for new apps, so all new apps installed from now. At this moment, no. But you can always go to app settings and start enabling and disabling whatever you wish. Um, Excuse me. Yes. If it automatically uh, it, it, uh, enables when I install the app, for example, uh, that use camera, mm -hmm. and um, in my settings, is it already uh, enabled? Enabled. Yeah. It's already enabled. Yeah. And legacy apps, okay? So this also works for apps that will not develop in Android Marshmallow. So when you start, when you download it and install it the first time, it will, you will be prompted with a whole long list of app permissions. So that cannot change for apps that were developed before. But then you can go in settings and you can enable or disable them as well. So we'll find them there. I will give you this for knowing uh, what permissions are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you know that some basic permissions are granted from the beginning, quite, uh, are, are prompted by default, like internet. Okay, uh, for those of you who have Android Marshmallow, you already know this, okay? What have you noticed when you go to the app drawer? 
but only of F. Yes? Vertical scrolling is new. Yes, vertical scrolling is new. We are closer. <laughs> Good. But did you know that uh, there is a, did you notice there is a special area at the top of the actor where acts are shown? And these are um, shown by frequency, but also like time of day or, do you know what I'm talking about? You want me to show you? You want me to show you? Okay. So if I go to the actor on the top, where it's written slide, download, Skype, keep, drive, and maybe. You see, so those are apps that were predicted that you will use them more often, depending on frequency you use them, or time of day when you use them, okay? And other criteria. And together with the vertical scrolling came these. You see this, right? With the letters. So the letters change, I don't have enough uh, applications installed so that you can, but on small, smaller phones you can see that it jumps to the letters. Or even now you can see that the app icon is in that. Okay, let's go forward. Text selection also made an improvement. So now it's not uh, top bar at the, at, the, at the top of the Android. Do you know what are the options that appear by default? There are three basic options, yes? Copy, select all, and share. <laughs> okay, you will get a black one. <laughs> oh, you should really come closer, right? I will focus now. <laughs> what, <laughs> uh, but uh, also you mentioned translate. So basically if you have installed Google Translate or you have other apps installed, then custom options will appear on this text selection part. Okay. Um, last question. What are what is smart lock for patches? So basically if you have a Google account, okay, you can save all uh, passwords app passwords, web passwords, and they will be connected to your Google account. So it's a Google password ma uh, manager. And it's not where you would think it is, because even if it says passwords, it's not in the security section of Marshmallow, but rather in the Google settings that I showed you. Good. So there would be more features about Marshmallow M that I didn't say anything about. Uh, at least one of you must have seen the Google I.O. presentation and knows that Nexus 5X, for example, has a support that all other devices don't have. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm, okay, I will give you this. Sorry? <laughs> there is something that this is for the big price. So there is a hardware change related to charging. Sorry? So it is, have you heard about uh, Type C USB? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And it also reverse charges. So this is something really cool. Like I can, uh, if my laptop is dying or my tablet is dying, I can charge it on my phone, right? I just connect them and you can reverse charge something. Okay, so that's all from my side. I think if you have any more questions, this was the big question. <laughs> If you have any more questions, I'm available. Yes. Questions? Now enjoy Android Marshall. <laughs>